Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for September 16th, 17th, and 18th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, this is the introduction. If this is the first, if you're a first-time viewer, this is the introduction. I have this on all of the videos, but after watching the introduction at least one time, I hope you'll just then go down to the description where you can bypass the intro and go straight to whatever the reading is you want to go to. Now, a lot of people cross-watch by doing the same thing. Anyway, because this is the weekend reading, when I get there, I will be using my Radley Valentine Angel cards, my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. I have pulled in my Doreen and Grant Virtue um, the the abundance of angels or the angels abundance not the abundance of angels and i will pull one from my emily anderson crystal deck now for this main reading the introduction i am going to use my weight top, uh, weight rider traditional tarot and my colette baron reed the good tarot now i have prayed meditated and infused all the decks with reiki energy but remember this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest, okay? Okay. Anyway, um, I am an intuitive channeler. I open myself when I'm doing that praying and meditating to higher power, um, source, God, Holy Spirit. That's who I call my connection. And I open myself and whatever the words are that need to come out, they need to come out. Okay, and it's best when I really try not to understand that. That's when I start digging a little bit of a hole, and what did they say when you're digging a hole? Stop digging. Okay, anyway, or when you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. Anyway, so let's go back here now. I am going to go through some of the, what's going on in the planets per se. Not a whole lot, except we have those six planets retrograde. We are feeling that pressure, a lot of that pressure. We have the two planets, which is, what is it? It's Venus, which is in Virgo. That's going direct, and Mars in Gemini is going direct also. Now, on the 16th, we have the Sun in Virgo, which is opposing Neptune, which is retrograde in Pisces. They're both at 24 degrees, so they really have a very strong opposition. So think of it as... Um, you know, just think of it as two sides of a baton in many, many ways. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I kind of see the baton on fire a little bit, and people twirling it and throwing it. Anyway, my mind just went down there. Anyway, with Neptune opposing the sun, um, Virgo opposing, you know, this part of P of Pisces also, it's an interesting energy. There's going to be a lot of vulnerability. There's going to be a lot of sensitivity. There's going to be a lot of caring energy here. However, there is going to also be too much trusting, but at the same time, finding things out that maybe we did not want to hear. Again, going back to that Saturn and Aquarius delusionment. This is one of those times that if the deal seems too good to be true, hey, wait on it wait on it okay i really you know there's some things going on also with venus venus which is in virgo venus the goddess of relation goddess of love relationships um in virgo which is very very practical energy so if there's somebody you want to impress on the romantic side maybe you know do something to you know to impress them as opposed to using your words so you know my you know something to impress me come and clean my garage <laughs> Not too romantic, but very, very practical. But there's other things. So there, so there's other things with Venus, you know, Venus in Virgo. And it's going to, I think it's going to be also opposing Mars in Gemini. So that in itself, kind of overlaying all of this, there could be some very interesting and very um, erratic things going on with relationships, erratic things going on with how we are even feeling. Feeling. Now again, Neptune and Pisces, the, what I was telling you about with the, um, with the sun, that in itself can be very, um, like, okay, very healing, very loving, very caring, but it can also make us feel very, very insecure. So there's, it's an emotional weekend. Um, it could go either way. It's not necessarily a really, and I know we have, we have Mercury in Libra, it's not necessarily a great time to do um, contracts, okay? Um, again, there's something about, you know, trusting the other person's word. 
And But if you have to, if you have to, make sure you get a lawyer, okay, or whoever it is that you have look over your contracts. I don't do legal advice with this. Anyway, so it just seems like it's going to be an interesting weekend. It's not going to be a, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a bad weekend. It's just going to be a very intensely emotional weekend, and it can go up or down. Um, you know, I told you that there was something with Venus and um, Mars, but there, but Venus is doing other things with Uranus. Um, not in a bad place at all, but Uranus is always expect the unexpected. There's, it's just, it's just one of those times that it's, it's just going to feel very um, anticipation, anticipatory, very, uh, like I said, the expect the unexpected. Uh, people are getting a little more, going to be a little more volatile. We're not quite sure good, bad. There's going to be very loving people. There's also going to be people that want to take advantage of the situation. So the other part about it is we are coming closer and closer to, if you're in the northern hemisphere, the autumn um, equinox. The southern, it would be your spring equinox. But there's also a lot of very spiritual, um, spiritual events that are also happening. And this is also a really intense time when the veil between the physical and the metaphysical world gets very, very thin. So we're, we're really entering that time right now. So interesting times as always. Let's see. Let's see what we've got going here. Let's see. Some people, um, yeah, the veil, that veil, I, I see people crossing the veil, crossing both ways. We'll see. One, two, and three. Three cards face down. Remember, court cards have dual energies. The pages have the underlying energy for uh, page is Earth. That is Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, money, job, career. The, uh, the night is the fire energies. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, passionate, burning, determined. Um, the queen has water energy, cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, fluid, emotional, and just very spiritual. And then the king underlying energy is air, and that is Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. You know, very uh, thought-provoking, making plans, thinking things through. Doesn't always mean that they're right, but they do think it through. Okay, let's see what we have here. Anything reversed has stronger energies. First card is... Okay, here we are. Now, we have, this is rods or wands. This is the fire energy. Aquarius, um, I'm sorry, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Uh, very passionate, burning, very determined. This is the nine of rods, the nine of wands, um, the nine of fire. Nine has a number, you know, and, and numbers are very important. They can be used for dark energy but we're using them for the lighter energy. We're, in, we're basically claiming them for our positive energy. So nine has a wrap up. It's a, you've got everything you've done. You've done everything you needed to do. Now, all you have to do is just pull it together. Just pull it together. With this, the nine of rods, the nine of wands, the, again, everything has been completed. It has been very completed. However, He's gone through, he's gone through a little bit to make sure that he's finished what it is. So there is, there is a little bit of a hardship. There is a little bit of a, of a really working, um, working all those hours, just, just working to get something done. But now that he has gotten it done, he does have to, now he has to stay where, he has to stand and protect what it is that he's done. Okay, and he's not necessarily going to back down. He's not going to necessarily uh, give in either. This is taking a stand, and it's very much taking a. Uh, it, it is protecting. It is protecting your energies. It's also protecting what you've owned. Okay, so here we go. Next card is now we have that old hierophant, major arcana card. So five is about change, positive, negative change. The Hierophant has a, has a very um, legalistic type of energy to it. At least that's how I look at it. Some readers will say, oh, it's you getting to your higher self. 
I look at it as more legalistic. I, you know, these are the rules, whether they make sense or not, whether they are really God given or not. These are the rules. So the rules are the rules are the rules. Now, you know, it, it's very, and there is the supporters. Those are the people that will enforce or will make sure that the rules are taken care of. So the hierophant to me represents the business part of you know you know getting down to business with the um, with the spiritual or the legalistic type of um, energies around. Now, when I see the hierophant, it kind of reminds me that I am somebody that will say, "Okay, I acknowledge you." Not necessarily, I'm not necessarily acknowledging you. I know you exist, but I think I'm going to go over there. Now, so this, the Hierophant has, has a, uh, an energy that's, again, it's very controlling. And if you, you know, you're, the rules are the rules are the rules. So it's interesting. Let's see what this next card is for this one. But again, the Hierophant and with these, I don't know. What, is, what does this mean? This has a real strong connection. Let's see what the next one is. The Page of Cups. So interesting with this, though, we have the page. Page, like I said, underlying energy is our um, Earth energy, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. The cup energy is our water energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. This, the page, the page is very eager to start. The page is very eager to jump in. A lot of times when we have pages of cups, knights of cups, it has something to do with budding romances, budding relationships. I'm kind of getting this very quizzical energy here. Um, you know, I'm getting this, you know, and again, pages will will do whatever needs to be done. You know, they they they're in many ways, um, even though they're very young, they are very they are fearless in many ways too. But I'm kind of like getting with this page of cups, and so what are we gonna do now? Where are we gonna go? What is it that we need to do? What is it that we need to know? So there's something here about holding fast. I don't know if this is because this is con this is joined or if there is a if there is a separation between this hierophant and the page of cups is kind of also like so so what are you going to do? I, I feel like the page of cup is giving personal responsibility to whoever is in the situation or whatever is in the situation. Remember, this is universal energies. And I feel like the Page of Cups are saying, so what, what are you going to do? Where, you know, so there's always a choice. So there is always a choice. We may not like the outcome of the choices, or we may like the outcome of the choices. But I feel like it's just a very quizzical energy. So, you know, many times there, you know, we always see that little fish. But I just kind of, I just, today I'm like, so what, you know, so what, or, or it's almost like, so, and what am I going to do? What am I going to do with you? What am I going to do with you? So let's see. Let's go on and see what else we might have for the weekend's energies. Let's see. From our Colette Baron. So Holy Spirit, God, Source, Higher Power. What? What does this all mean? What does this all mean? Again, I do get, you know, the nine of rods is always stand strong. Stand strong. And it's also defend what you, defend your work. Defend who you are. Defend what you've accomplished. And don't back down. Don't back down. So, and I feel like, you know, this is the guy that I'm always a little bit, and you know this. If you've been following me, you know I'm like, ah, Hierophant. Ah, uh, it's all rules and regulations, and many times rules and regulations that just don't make sense. And there we go. Card is falling out. Okay. This is actually quite a nice card. Excuse me. Here we go. Now I, I shrink. <laughs> anyway, this is the seven of earth. Okay. The seven is a divine number. It is, you know, divine over, over, un, overreach, umbrella type of energy. Um, it is also um, divine intervention. It can also be divine interference. But it again, it's it's like it, it's like intervention, but yet you didn't really want it as much. So that's what interference is about. But again, this is the Earth energy, Capricorn and Virgo and Taurus, and all of them have very strong influences this weekend here. The Seven of Earth 
is like whatever this is going on, you are ready. You're ready to either make that decision. You're ready to stand firm. You're ready to not back down. You're ready with whatever even this legalistic energy is about. Maybe, maybe you have, maybe you're going in front of, and again, no legal advice here. Maybe you're going in front of a, um, I don't know, um, you know, a court of some sort, and you know, you have to present your facts. The thing about the um, seven of Earth is you. It, you're ready, but you also have everything you need to be ready. Now, the seven of earth, kind of this is like you've planted your harvest. The weather's great. Just get ready because you're going to harvest your harvest soon, okay? Um, but again, sometimes the seven of earth does mean there's a little bit of a delay, but just be patient. Be patient, especially with any of the emotional energies because there's going to, I feel like this is you know, just this Neptune and all this Venus stuff and it just it just feels like um, relationships will either come together or be stretched. Um, I feel like people will either be doing the right thing or I mean they won't. It just feels very uh, polar in many ways, but yet um, very clearing also. Okay, so you know again that's with my my lovely little Saturn in Aquarius. This is always about. This is always about seeing, you know, the truth versus seeing the illusions. So we might, you know, just, we will see what we will see. Let me know, please. You know, I love the people that read with me. So let me know what you believe or what you see of this. Let me know who you think the uh, Hierophant is because, <sighs> or what kind of energy I should say the Hierophant has. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Why? Um, remember to um, comment, then do the like, share, subscribe, and click on the bell so you keep me you keep me going. Thank you all, and let's start our readings now. Hello, my cancers, and how are you doing? Um, I I feel like you're gonna feel this Neptune Sun thing going on, but I don't necessarily think that you're going to feel it as much as if it had been with the moon. So I think that you're actually, I think it might actually um, bring up some, oh, it might bring up some feelings or some things that you um, need to say. You might need to clear some air around you. Do it with love. Be gentle. Uh, and, you know, and just like I said, be it, do, do it with love. But I feel like it might actually be very good um, chakra cleansing for you with this too. Okay, let's see what we have for, okay, I don't know what we want to do with that yet. For our cancers, we have two cards right there. Let's go here, one, two, and three, three cards, and then we'll look at those last two ones when we're done. I just feel like we need our three cards here. Here we go, first card up, seven of air, so seven, divine umbrella, Divine, uh, um, you know, divine covering. Air energy is your thought processes. Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Money. I mean, it's. I'm sorry. It's, it's thinking things through. It's making some plans. The seven of air is like looking at things a little differently. The seven of air is kind of like, oh, well, that was that doesn't work for me. But what will work for me? Where should I go with this? What am I supposed to be doing with this? It's just looking at things differently, but it's also connecting. Again, that seven does say connect with your higher power, connect with the divine for you to possibly open some of your eyes up, open some of that, you know, some of these uh, more spiritual chakras up. There is this, you know, it's like this wind is trying to blow and it's trying to clear up some cobwebs for you too. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. Seven of air, plans that need revision, more going on that meets the eye poor timing so it just kind of wants to it wants to clear it wants to clear out the dust i kind of get this you know this feeling of an old dusty old haunted house and opening all the windows up opening up the drapes letting the sun come in sweeping sweeping things away sweeping out some old and bringing in some new fresh energies okay let's see what we and this weekend it does feel like this could be one of those weekends to do it let's see what we've got here the magician. So here we have that one, one new beginning, new start. Major Arcana, Archangel Raziel. Raziel says, as in heaven, so on earth. Okay, things can be done. Trust, you know, completely connect. 
Um, you know, one of the things is also, remember, you need to use your words. You need to ask. You need to, if you want higher power to help you with something, you want to connect with your angels, you need to use your words to ask, okay? Because they can see that you might need some help, but they're going to intervene. They're going to, their intervention is going to come when you literally say, fine, would you help me? I'm giving it to you. But Archangel Raziel, the magician, is saying you really have everything you need. I really kind of get this. All you need to do, my, my cancers, is ask. Okay, you are ready. You have the resources or the ability to manifest them. Life is magical. Last card with this. Reversed is the hermit. So we have Raziel. Again, really very strong. Well, they're all strong connections with heaven, but the, this is trying to tell you to really be stronger with your connection to heaven. Now, if you're somebody that's meditating all, the day, all day long, then that's not for you. You are very connected. But there's little ways of doing it. My Mine is if I'm driving, oh God, help me. Um, I need your help. Please take over. Do all these things. If I'm by myself doing housework, you know, sometimes somebody will come in and say, well, who are you talking to? Well, I was talking to God, you know, talking to higher power, um, or my conversation, not yours. But this is these are little ways of doing that. So it's always, you know, it's always connecting in many ways. The hermit steps back to make sure that he is in connection, okay, that he is connecting. The thing about the hermit, too, he does have his light. He carries his light with him. Um, remember, when you are of the light, you are a divine spark. And with that, you have lots of creativity to it, okay? He has his staff that will lead him, that will help him to, to secure his footing. Now, he also has these wings. He's got the, he's, you know, and also it's interesting. It feels like he lives on a different planet because, uh, is that the earth over there? Hmm, I don't know. Spend time in quiet meditation spiritual teaching, self-discovery. So he is learning about himself too. Uh, interesting for this weekend for you. Now let's see what these two cards are, just for kicks and giggles. Nothing is reversed. Let's see, first card is ego, ego energy. Now, 15, change, ego, the devil energy. But it's with Archangel Jophiel, who has so much creativity, you know. So, so the you know the devil energy is about fear. The devil energy is like, well, how will you know what? Will I look foolish? That you know, will I will I look foolish? Are people going to laugh at me? So that's all. That's what ego is all about. But again, too, fear is a tool of the devil. It tries to keep you in chains. It tries to keep you in bondage. Sometimes with this, and especially maybe this weekend, this might be a good weekend for you to be a little vulnerable, okay? So, a false sense of entrapment, being overly focused on material things, negative or fear-based thoughts. We're going to put that under here a little bit, because this in itself, I, I'm going to feel like these are the things you just need to be aware of and watch out for. Okay, let's see what we've got here. The queen of water. Well, water, water. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Fluid and emotional. The queen stands in her power. Loving energy here. You know, loving, wonderful energy. Wants to make everything right in the world. Fluid, spiritual energy. So there, And you do have a lot of spiritual energy. Even with this, you do. There's a lot of spiritual energy around you. So this is going to be one of those weeks. I think it's a very good breakout week for you. I think it's a great... Okay, you know, really cleansing weekend for you. I think it's a great that pos thing. This could be again. You've been in this turning energy. You, it's kind of like your, your turning that corner is start. You know, is it's like you're you're getting around the corner. It's been taking a while, but it's again. There's this. Let's let's uh, you know, there's this vacuum. Let's let's cleanse. Let's get this all cleaned out. Okay, but you can make anything happen. Here we go. Tender-hearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. Again, so it's kind of like, and again, we have these two, and they did fall out together. There is fear. Is it fear of a new relationship? Is it fear? 
are you afraid of a relationship you're already in? Are, is there like a, a little fear to commit with these two also? Somebody out there, are you afraid? Is there a fear, you know, are you fear? Oh, are you afraid to commit and take it to another level? Not quite sure. But down here, this is basically, um, I do feel there's an empowerment with this seven of air. And it's kind of saying you can make you can make things happen. You can make things happen, my cancer. And if it's about this relationship, you can you you have more control and you're more in charge of it than you might. Okay, let's go on and see what our John Holland has to do, has to say for our cancers. Let's see what we've got for our John Holland. Okay, what do we have for our cancers here? Again, don't be afraid. Um, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Connect. Higher power will get you through anything. Next card is Harmony. This is the lover's card. So we have a six, the number of man. It's the energy you can put into making something happen. Harmony, like I said, this is the lover's card. Lover's card has a lot of, you know, it's all about relationships, but it can be different types of relationships. This has a personal relationship. This has an intimate relationship. And it does feel like it is something that can grow. It is something that can, um, there is a very strong connection with this lover's energy too. You know, she's looking into his eyes. He's looking into hers. Their palms are meeting. There is, there you can just see and you can feel that there is a strong, strong connection. So is this all about, is this meeting somebody? Is this somebody that's already in your life? Not sure on that, but let's go on and see what we have with our Angels of Abundance, okay? So here we go. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What do we have here? So that could be, you know, there could be plans meet. Maybe somebody comes into your life. Maybe you're, you know, again, too, maybe you are um, bringing it to another level, your relationship. It's kind of scary, kind of... Uh, Kind of exciting at the same time. Worried. Will he, she say no? Will he, see, she, he, she say yes? Here we go. Let's see what we've got. Angels of Abundance. Here we go. Clean energy food. When you, when you fuel your body, with healthy, oh, I'm sorry, with healthful organic, with a healthful organic diet, you increase your energy levels and ability to focus. This automatically leads to more efficiency, better ideas, and a higher vibration, which attracts golden opportunities and beneficial relationships. Watch, you know, and watch, watch what you're eating. That's a really good, um, it's, it, that's good. It just really is good. Clean Clean eating is better. Also, watch what you're drinking. Watch what you're drinking. Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of things that um, can affect your uh, pineal gland that's additive. So, you know, and that's, that's about your crown and your, your crown chakra and your third eye chakra, your pituitary gland. So it, it just watch. Watch what you put into your body. Watch what you put into your eyes, you know, like your TV, such like that. Watch what you uh, read, put into your mind. But watch what you put into your body, too. So let's see what we have here. What crystal or energy for my cancers? Titanium rainbow quartz. Awakening all chakras. Ultimate manifestation, which is interesting because that is the magician. Vibrancy, a powerful shift. So my cancers. Interesting stuff. What does it mean? You tell me. Take a moment also to like, share, subscribe. Click on your bell for notification. The likes really do help, so please like, like, like. As always, my Cancers, know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.